any political talk who comes on my page to talk rubbish, it means you've given up on your life. I was born poorer than you. So don't feel frustrated or, or think you cannot make it in life. You can make it with your hand. I've made it with my hand. I've never been in government. I've never been a local government chairman. I've never been a councillor. Nothing. My father died when I was 13 years old. My mother was a stark illiterate. But I made sure I went to school. I did my school sat three times. Me, I have nothing to pretend about. Three times I did school sat. 1976, 1977, 1978. My mom made sure I went to school, despite the fact that she did not go to school herself. So for me, <laughs> when I see young people come to waste time, waste their data on, on uh, social media, I just feel like crying for them. Let's get serious. Let's get serious. You can do it. But you won't do it if you feel you all you need, all you owe the world is to come on social media and lament like Jeremiah. I walk day and night. <laughs> I walk day and night. Are you not surprised that in 24 years? Tinubu was governor of Lagos for eight years. Did you see me in his government? Did you see me in his political party? Because my political philosophy is different. I, I believe that if we change dictators away, we cannot become dictators ourselves. I will say it anywhere. That's my grouse. That's my only grouse against Tinubu, the fact that one man will control the state for 24 years and whether good or bad, you are the only one who can determine who can be anything in the state. I, I disagree. That's my that's my position. I can't hide that. And if people say, oh, don't say it because it's your friend, then I consider that, <laughs> don't let me use uh, some words. <laughs> I disagree. So why did I fight all the previous leaders? I fought Babangida. I fought Abacha. I fought Shuneko. I fought... Maybe Abdullah Abaka was the only man I didn't fight because he was a gentleman. Within one year, he was ready to go. I criticized Obasanjo endlessly, as close as we are. He's my Baba. I criticized him. I criticized him. I'm sure if he had this chance, he would have slapped me a few times. <laughs> I go to his house. His, his wife still called me yesterday. Because we're celebrating our 70th very soon, as close as I am to that family. I was one of the closest people to tell the former first lady, Mrs. Stella Obasanjo, God bless her soul. I was extremely close to her. In fact, the last time they came to Ghana with Baba, they were staying in an hotel called M Plaza in Ghana. And I was with Mrs. Stella Obasanjo, God bless her soul, God rest her soul. And Baba was in one corner. And Auntie Stella asked me, then they want to go and greet your Baba. I said, no, I won't greet him. We're fighting. That's who I am. I'm not a pretender. I don't pretend. Go and read my history. <laughs> there is nothing special <laughs> in, what is going, in, in what is going on. Nothing. If you are wrong, you are wrong. Aha. If our Tinubu, I will apologize to Nigerians. Look, there are too many things in those documents that are not straight. So, but for as long as you keep saying you are right and Nigerians are wrong, I cannot support you. Imagine if he came out immediately and said, look, as a young man, I was a bit rascally, I made some mistakes and now, see how God has made me miraculously into an important man in Africa and I want to apologize for everything. I want to apologize to the people I have wronged. I want to apologize for my errors of judgment. There is nobody too big to apologize. <laughs> you know? So, but Nigeria, some people are held bent on calling black white and white black. I won't be one of them. I'm sorry. You can call me this lawyer. You can call me anything. I don't care. I'm not one of them. 
how can a man something so glaring something so obvious and they are saying i think we should apologize to Tinubu. such i don't know where they got those people from how people can stand logic on his head you are disgracing us all over the world and you are still being arrogant about it but i don't blame them it's uh Tinubu that condones all those minions he condones them Maybe he enjoys their company, so, but I'm sorry, <laughs> I can't be in that company. There is nobody in this life who is perfect, and there is no imperfection that cannot be cleaned up if you are sincere and disciplined. But what I see around all those APC guys is that they are too arrogant to come down and be sober. They are so arrogant. And they lack discipline. Even they were abusing their boss, Buhari, before he left power. They were abusing him publicly on television, on radio, everywhere. I'm sorry, oh, I'm not a part of that uh, group. I've said it repeatedly. You can abuse me if I was in their party all along. 24 years. Because I believe in God that if I have survived without them for 24 years, so is it now that I will not start hiding behind one finger because I want food? <laughs> no. I will make small amala, beggary, and they will do and eat. Walk, do my work. I'm here. I will be at my desk till maybe 1 a.m., 2 a.m. I'll sleep. By 5 a.m., 6 a.m., I'm up again. I'm not a lazy bum. A lot of people in Nigeria are lazy. And what is their problem? They are all expecting that they will get appointment. They are all expecting they will get some crumbs instead of going to work. How many people can government employ? How many people can Tinubu give appointment? People are just lazy, you know. If you have a job, go and face your job and stop wasting your time around the corridor of power. <laughs> Sorry. Those who need me will. Ah, which of my phones is ringing? I can't see it. Anyway, so Chief Ganifa and me. Ah, that was my. Hey, that was my man. <laughs> we were extremely close. He never socialized. He made an exception for me on my wedding. When he turned up in the Jabubu, I almost fainted. I thought I saw an apparition. So I didn't start today. 1992. Chief MKO, Chief Ganifa Emi, Chief Ebrina Barato, Chief Alex Akinyele. Everybody turned up at my wedding. Chief Chris Funola Okunawa. You see? Oluboye Gaulusoya. Normally, I'm not a rude person, but I will be rude to you tonight. You grew up to know that people from my region are Wayo people. And I'm sure your parents trained you well, but you refuse to take the training. How can you dismiss an entire region that they are Wayo people? Which Wayo have they done before? What business have you done in your life? If you are not a politi political thug, you won't come on my page. And say the people from my area were you people. Or my life like a broku. But the Jabalagba ne no. And the Bamada Muni, no non pe me Yoruba. Since you are Yoruba, so I'll speak Yoruba. So you know what they call it Bama Badanu. You come on my page and this means people from my area were you people. What were you have I done? A Wayo person will refuse to go and take appointment in Nigeria. A Wayo person will have a friend who is president, and he will not jump up to say, let me go there. Does Atiku have more money to give me than Tinubu? When they were distributing money under Jonathan, did you see my name among? Or you think I don't like money? I don't have a simple, a, a, a single plot in the whole of Lagos State at my age with my status. One plot I don't have. I live in a flat. I'm happy. All the nonsense that people write. You think you come on my page, I won't reply you. Come on my page 
as many times as you come, I will reply you. Your name is Olubuye Gaulu. You should be ashamed of yourself. Ah, those days are gone. No, I'm not contesting. Those days are gone. When if you can come and hear any nonsense on my page, I will reply you measure for measure. Apologies, William Shakespeare. Shameless old man. So anyway, let's uh, let's continue. Don't let's allow any devil to distract our attention. <laughs> In a country where almost everyone, everything depends on government, you have someone who is always in opposition and speaking against, you know, the madness of our authorities. If you don't appreciate it, keep your mouth shut. I decided to do it. You came on my page, I didn't invite you. I decided to do what I am doing. Nobody sent me to do it. I love my country. If you don't love your country, that's your business. In the future, you will tell your children what you did when your mates were fighting to make Nigeria better. You will tell your children that you chose to be parasitic. You chose to be a liar who could not speak up. You are not a man. A man should be able to speak up. That's what they call manhood. Come to my page to talk rubbish. <laughs> And the people you are defending, they don't know you. You don't know them. You don't know anything about them. They don't. They are not even aware of your existence. You come here because you are a Yoruba man. Are you more Yoruba than me? <laughs> anyway, like I said, come on my page. You give me nonsense, I give you fire. I mean, I don't know anything about Wikipedia. Or... I think we never cried over any license that was revoked. You see, I hate when people display illiteracy on social media. If you don't have an information, stop spreading falsehood. I think we cry over which license. When God has blessed a man, there is no way any man can frustrate him. If I didn't know Atiku well enough before, now I know him much better and I respect him. He's a great administrator, very focused. And he's a man who believes, he's a practicing Muslim who believes so much in Allah and believes that only Allah can give him things and only Allah can take it. He doesn't care. They took his business away. In this Nigeria, man's in humanity against man. His fellow Fulani man took it. Buhari, he didn't cry. He continues to manage his life. God has blessed him with a very good family, fantastic children, very well educated, and they are all ingrained in their businesses. So they are trying their best. He's not a perfect human being. I'm not a perfect human being. But at least I can see a lot of decency around him. I can see a lot of discipline. And that's what matters. A leader must have some discipline. A leader must be calm. It's, everything cannot be by force. So you say, oh, is it because at a particular you are fighting Tinubu? What nonsense. I'm not that kind of person. If you don't know a 63-year-old man, I can't be a political thug. If I saw thugly around Atiku, I will never be a part of his campaign. You can never see or hear anywhere that Atiku sent a talk to go and beat someone up or to go and prevent someone from voting. You will never see it. Those are my ideals. Those are my ideals. But we malign people because we are not from the same area of Nigeria, because we are not practicing the same religion, because of rumors we heard about them, we just hate them. Not me. I do my investigation so that God, even in the Bible, one of the first things I learned in Sunday school was judge not so that you will not be judged. 
So I'm always measured in my judgment of people. And even at that, there is nothing I cannot forgive. But let people ask for forgiveness. You cannot make all the kind of errors that I saw in Tinubu's files and you still insist that we should all get lost, we should all shut up. 